So today I'm going to be taking a look at one of the newer releases from Ferrer. It's a model I've been interested in seeing in person in a while, and let's get into the review. So we have a diameter of 39 millimeters, lug to lug of about 43 millimeters, height of 10.9, and a lug width of 20 millimeters. Some other general specifications for the watch, we're going to have the Salita SW216 Labor Grade movement beating away in here. You can see it has a kind of classic Ferrer decoration, some blued screws, uh, so not too bad looking, just classic hand wind movement, just about a 45-ish hour power reserve, so nothing too crazy. But thankfully they did opt for a version that is uh, kind of more finished, you have more brushing and perlage and all that good stuff. So it is decent looking through the display case back. You have sapphire crystal on the back, a dome sapphire crystal on the front that also has under AR coating. You have 50 meters of stated water resistance with a regular push-pull crown. And last but not least, depending on the strap, this watch starts at about 990 US dollars. So starting off with the dial here, and I think this is undoubtedly one of the best parts about the watch. Uh, one interesting, I guess, note about the watch is that they didn't go for heat blued hands. They go for what they call octane blue hands and markers. I think that just is more of a reference to the color tone rather than any process used to do it. I'm sure this is just a kind of coating process that makes the color. At the end of the day, blue coated hands can end up looking a lot cheaper than standard heat blued. But here, what's nice is they don't really have a cheap look to them. Uh, dead on and at certain angles, you get a very almost black, very deep blue colored tone. And as you move them, you get some parts of the hands and some parts of the indices that light up as light blue. You have other parts that stay dark. So it is a really nice effect and it doesn't look cheap at all in my opinion. What's really nice too is most of the colors on the dial are pretty consistent. There's not a lot of variation in the blue tone. Um, so that's really nice to see here. Looking a little bit more generally, we do have Arabic numerals for all the indices except six o'clock, which is a little stick marker, which I do like instead of having the cut off six, just having the marker there, it's better than just empty space. We do have alpha style hands, which are very rarely used, but I think look fantastic here and mirror nicely with the bifaceted nature with the bifaceted fairer standard logo there. You can see the watch has a sector type feel to it. We have a raised hour track ring that is circularly brushed. We have a middle more sunken down base dial portion that is vertically brushed. And then we have the outside dial portion, which is just kind of a continuation of the middle dial that holds the uh, seconds track, minutes track. We of course also have a sub seconds here that actually has this kind of uh, stepped down sun ray, uh, kind of like uh, circular grained track here. So it adds not only a nice little finish to the watch, nice little point of interest, but a, a just more layering and dimension, which is nice to see. I like that they kept the text very minimal here. We just have fair universal at the very top 12 o'clock here and then Swiss made at the very, very bottom in small lettering. You don't have any frivolous text, nothing unnecessary. You have a lot of balance from the uh, six o'clock sub seconds balancing out the text. So everything is just really well proportioned, well laid out and very uh, symmetrical and pleasing to the eye. I really do like the brushing effect on this watch. You get the tones that really come out as a light silver to a deeper gray depending on the angle and it just plays with the light because of course the uh, different areas of the watch are brushed in different directions, they pick up light differently. It really is a dynamic dial because you either get the brushing that's really popping and changing colors or then you get the numerals that are popping and changing colors or you get both at the same time. So it is one of those watches where you have a lot of just dynamic nature to the dial and as you move around it just becomes better. Taking a look in more natural light, the Ferrer obviously takes on a little bit more of a uniform tone uh, when you have very soft lighting, the gray is kind of more uh, gentle. Uh, and the blue also doesn't pop out as much. It's a very gentle, uniform tone. Uh, but when you get it in natural light, the gray tones pop out a lot more. There's a lot more color changingness to the dial. The blue of the hands and numerals go dark at certain angles, bright at certain other angles. And there is definitely a lot of life to the dial, depending on what angle you're holding it at and what lighting situation basically you have it under. So zooming on the dial here, we can see the brushing is done very, very finely, and I think pretty uniformly too. I think it may be a little bit more fine than brushing textures I'm used to seeing. There's usually a little bit more of a deeper, uh, more defined graining to it, which usually ends up giving a more dramatic color change to the dial. But as it stands here, it's not bad. It is maybe just a little bit more subtle than I would have expected, but still nicely done. We can see all the applied elements are done really well. That fair logo in specific is really nice and very often one part of it is dark and one part of it is light. So it just really has a lot of life to the logo itself. The fair text is also very nicely done. It is much more flat. There isn't really any three dimensionality to the text, but there's a lot of layering going on with the rest of the dial. So it really makes up for that. Looking at the hour track itself, you can see there is a little bit more of a defined grain here and it is nice to see, uh, especially at this angle, you can tell it looks like a little bit more of a darker gray 
than the base dial itself. That's not true, depending on the angle, the colors can be very matched, and then the uh, hours track can actually look brighter. So again, there is a lot of life to this brushing. Looking at the markers themselves, they are really well done. I don't know what they're coated in, but it is a very nice uniform coating. The only QC issue I've really found is you have that little speck there on the two o'clock marker, or the two o'clock portion of the 12 o'clock marker rather. Every other marker is very clean, very well done, very nicely polished, catches the light really well. And you can even see the outer minutes track is done in this very subtle blue tone, which is really nice touch. It ties in with the rest of the dial. It would have been nice to see the fairer text actually done in blue to match everything else. But to be honest, at some angles, the fairer text does look blue. I don't know if it's a trick of the eye just because there's so much silver and so much blue on the dial. So uh, I do think the fairer text is black, but at the end of the day, sometimes it does lean blue anyway. So. Uh, it still does color match pretty well. Looking at the sub-seconds track here, it is actually very well done. You can see the concentric circling is nicely done. The printing on top of it is very well done. Uh, you can see the brushing of the actual like little track here is very, very continuous with the rest of the dial. So this is actually one of the best, I think, sub-seconds track I've seen. It is very nestled in here with the hour track. It follows the shape really well. So it is very, very nicely executed. And the hand itself is actually not badly finished. You do see there's a little bit of a speck there towards the middle of the hand itself, but as it stands, it's really not that badly done. Looking at the uh, main handset, you can see here, obviously, again, this very, very bright blue tone to the hand. Sometimes it's darker, sometimes it's brighter. They do have a lot of life and color depth to them. You can see here on the hour hand, there is that tiny little speck. Something I've never noticed from uh, wrist view and something you really can't see until you go on this magnification, but uh, there are, of course, little tiny QC issues. It's probably done from the coating process, or there might be a, bit, uh, a little bit of dust on the dial when the watch was coated. Not too big of a deal, though, and I think a QC issue that's fair for the price point. We do get a nice cap to the center pinion here, which is also done in a brushed finish, which ties in really nicely with the rest of the dial. Moving on to the minutes hand, it's mostly blemish-free. At the very, very tip, you can see there's like the smallest of scratches on the surface right there. It actually might just be like a little bit of fuzz as well on the hand itself, but it is there at the end of the day. What's nice about the hand is it does go all the way out to the actual minutes track, so it is, I think, very, very well sized for the dial and very well proportioned. Uh, so the actual dial here, I think, is very well done, very nicely finished. There's a lot of differences in finish and just a lot of detail, a lot of depth. Uh, the hands and markers have a very inky quality to them, a very deep coloration. And it's surprising, again, bluing can look very cheap when it's not done as a traditional heat blued process. But here I do think it is almost playful enough and colorful enough to where it actually just fits Ferrer's usual theme of color. So moving on to the case of this watch, and maybe while not as interesting and complicated as the dial, it is actually still a very cool case. You can see it is this somewhat cushioned, somewhat curved case style. It's not quite a traditional square, it's not quite a traditional cushion, uh, but it's very cushion-esque. They use what they consider bat ear lugs here, which is an interesting term, and it's a point of the watch where I kind of love it and I kind of hate it, depending on the angle, depending on the strap that it's on, and depending how it looks on wrist, depending on even the angle that I'm looking at it on wrist, and we'll get into that a little bit more later. Looking a little bit more generally, we do see we have high polish everywhere, and what's really nice is there's a lot of curves to this watch. You can see it like from a barrel down view here. There's just a lot of curved gentle surfaces on the watch. So what's nice is because of that curve it ends up catching and dispersing the light very evenly, very softly, and just really drawing your eye in to other areas of the watch. You can see of course the bezel itself has a very kind of loosely square shape to it, but it has very soft curves, very soft edges, and it is just, I think, a very pleasing shape overall. Looking at it from a kind of side view, you can see how much the case itself kind of bellows out. It has a very gentle curve, uh, and it's the fattest in the middle. You can see looking at it from the side view, it has a very much like teardrop pear-ish type shape. It's very thin at the ends, very thick in the middle. It Although it's not being the thinnest watch in the world, it actually does wear pretty well on wrist, thankfully because it's a manual wine and two just because the overall case shape and the curves on the watch itself. One thing to note is the lugs are fairly short, so sometimes if you have a very, very thick strap, it's not gonna fit in perfectly, but what is nice is they did kind of think of that and you can kind of see in here, they did cut away the bottom portion of the case right there. So technically, um, Fairly thick straps still fit, like this one. It is not the thinnest strap in the world, 
Uh, but if it's too thick, it definitely won't fit. But it's nice that they included that case construction because then only very, very thin straps and honestly probably only curved spring bar straps would have fit normally. The tolerances of the case are very nice. The bezel is a completely separate piece, but it is very, very flush to the surface of the uh, case itself. There aren't any holes like or uh, edges where dust can get caught or anything like that. And you can see the bezel is slightly inset from the edge of the case body too. So it, it just gives a very nice step down case, a little Art Deco-ish. Uh, it just is a very interesting, unique case shape. Looking at this side, we of course have the signed Ferrer bronze crown, which is kind of synonymous with Ferrer at this point. Uh, interesting touch, adds a little bit of color to the watch. Can't complain. And then of course, looking at the case back, we have the you know quote unquote proprietary Ferrer finishing on the bridges. We do have a nicely circular brushed case back, which interesting is not the entire case back is circularly brushed. You can see it has this square-ish type shape and only the circular portion is brushed, whereas these outer portions here are polished. Interesting move, but I guess it just kind of frames the text itself. You do have just some general text here, sapphire glass, Swiss made, the reference number, all that good stuff. So nothing crazy to look at, but not a bad movement either. And I think for a thousand dollars, it's fairly uh, nice to see and fairly well priced. Speaking of the movement, it is fairly easy to wind. It has a good movement. There's a very clicky feedback, but it's not overly whiny. It's not overly grainy. Uh, it's very classic to like kind of an ETA manual wind, kind of the uh, maybe like Nomos alpha movement. It has that same similar type feel. So moving on to how this watch wears, earlier I was wearing this pretty cool micro brand Havan Tivali. This is a little bit larger than I usually wear, 41 millimeters, so the fair should look a little smaller by comparison. And here we have the watch sitting on my six and a half inch wrist, and I think you can tell it looks pretty well proportioned, pretty nicely sized, and I do think it looks really good. Uh, I think from pictures and sometimes from wrist shots and sometimes just from press photos, this case shape, this newer squarish type case that they came up with, it can look a little bit bulky, a little bit too rounded, a little bit too... Uh, almost bloated in a way. But in person, on wrist, it actually feels very nice, very curvaceous, and just very honestly refined. You can see how down the barrel, the watch doesn't really rise up off the wrist too high. What's really nice is the crystal is pretty much the highest point of the watch. The edges of the bezel curve down a little bit to meet the wrist, so it doesn't really feel that thick at all on wrist sits down very comfortably. There are no sharp edges on this watch at all. Uh, the crown, of course, is rounded. The crown is fairly small. Uh, and everything else is just very nice and uh, soft, almost on the wrist. The lugs themselves are a little bit interesting. Again, they're fairly short. They're not like a traditional wire lug that we're kind of used to seeing on more cushion-style cases. They're not traditional stick lugs. They have this little bit more curvaceous nature about them. They are curved on the outside and straight on the inside, so it's a little bit of an interesting look. Uh, again, it does look very much like an ear, quote unquote, they are called bat ear lugs. So uh, very interesting style. I do think it blends well with the design, blends well with the curves here on the edges of the case. And the more I do wear this watch, the more I do like that shape. One thing I will note though, is because the case is fairly, uh, you know, I guess pudgy, there's a lot of surface area, there's a lot of rounded corners, it is a kind of larger feeling square. I don't think it works perfectly with straps with a large taper. So this goes from 20 down to 16. Honestly, I think almost 20 by 20 straps look almost the best on this watch. I think 20 by 18 is kind of where the sweet spot you don't want to go below because when you get a very dramatic taper, it makes the watch feel almost a little bit top heavy, uh, a little bit imbalanced, a little bit ill-proportioned. So this is something to keep in mind. Although the watch doesn't sit perfectly flush, there's a little bit of daylight shining through. It is still a very thin case, a very comfortable case. It sits pretty low to the wrist. So it is a very comfortable watch to wear overall. And it, again, it feels very nice on wrist. It's a very unique shape, but it's a well-wearing shape that I think works small wrist because of the short leg to lug. It will also work well on large wrist because it does have a fairly large surface area. Moving the watch a little bit higher on my wrist here, you can see it is still very well proportioned. It doesn't overhang. Uh, it is still a kind of a larger watch. It's about 39 millimeters and squares tend to wear larger. But because of the way the case shape is, it's relatively thin. It's not too long to lug. It can be worn on pretty small wrists and I think still look really good. As a note, this is not the original strap. This is a nice distressed blue uh, Vario Italian leather. Uh, and I think it pairs really well with the watch despite being a little bit too much of a taper for it, I think. And let's put it on the original strap. So here's the strap I optioned for the Ferro to come on. It is this blue rubber strap that I think gives it a very playful feel. And obviously the blue tones work very well on the watch. At the end of the day, uh, it is a very comfortable strap. It's not too thick, but it is conformed very nicely. It is a little bit on the long side. So if I actually kept this watch and wore it on this strap, I would just cut the... Uh, 
a uh, little bit of excess that hangs out, but as it stands, very comfortable and I think pairs really well. It's a little bit on the longer side. I even kept <laughs> the tag on the strap, but um, you can see the strap has a little bit less of a taper to it than the other strap does, and I think it works better proportionally. This is a 20 to 18 millimeter strap, so you can see the very slight taper is nice, but it's not so dramatic where it feels top heavy. It looks really, really proportional and really nice. Very comfortable combo, very comfortable strap, really nice uh, signed fair buckle there on the strap too. So. As a stock strap that's included, I think this is a very fantastic strap. You can tell it's not just a uh, strap that they rebranded off of AliExpress or anything like that. This is definitely something that a lot of uh, time and a little bit more effort actually went into. Next, we have this gray strap from Deluxe. Uh, you can see it gives it a very monotone feel, really plays off those gray tones, makes the blue tones even pop out more, be a little bit more apparent. This is a 20 to 16 millimeter strap, and I do think it would have looked a little bit better as a 20 to 18, but that's just my preference. It does, I think, just still look good, gives it a very monotone feel, matches the gray tones pretty well, but again, just lets the watch shine a little bit more. Next, we have this brown Batera leather strap from King Leathercraft. The brown tone works really well, makes it a little bit brighter, a little bit more playful. Uh, and this is a 20 to 18 millimeter strap, so I think it pairs well a little bit more proportionally. Again, I do think it just looks a little less top heavy with this more less dramatic taper. Feels very good on wrist, looks pretty nice, very comfortable strap. Uh, and the tones I think match pretty well. Next we have this lovely light pink uh, silicone strap from H&S Straps, and this is a 20 to 20 millimeter strap. And I do think it looks perfect on the watch, looks perfect on wrist, uh, really balances out the kind of visual heft of the watch itself. And that pink and blue and silver combo I think just looks fantastic. I think personally the 20 to 20 looks super balanced on this watch. Let me know what you think. Uh, again, the pink tone's really fun, really bright, really summery. Uh, and I do think this almost plays into the whole fair theme of color with this pink strap. So why not stay true to the fair design language? And last but never least, we have my white archer silicone strap. It's not the perfect, perfect combo because again, the dial is more pure silver uh, and gray. But as it stands, it still pops on the dial. It still looks great. Looks a little bit better on wrist than it does off. So let's put it on. I do think the pink pairs a little bit better, but this combo is a little bit more subdued, a little bit less daring, uh, but still looks very nice, color matched, a little bit fun, a little bit summer, a little bit uh, more comfortable than leather. Uh, and it's not an expensive strap, it's like 14 bucks, so it really changes up the wash strap. And maybe if you just wanna uh, kinda see how a 20 to 20 millimeter strap looks on this watch, try out this strap and I think you'll uh, be pleasantly surprised and also just like the combo. And just moving the watch around here in the light a little bit, again, you get some of those blue tones that just come out like crazy. Uh, so it is really just a beautifully dynamic dial. And just for the sake of comparison, bringing this random Instagram added quartz watch that I thought looked really nice in, this has more of a traditional Panerai style, uh, cushion style case with more traditional lugs. And you can see how different kind of the case shapes end up looking. The squarish case, the cushion shape here, ends up being a lot more defined because the lugs are separated from the case body. But here on the fairer, since you have the lugs more integrated, it gives it a very, very unique, more different, more interesting, and I think just wholly different shape and look to it. Another big point too is you usually have this very defined bezel that pops up from the K-shape itself, which is nice because it ends up being fairly thin. Um, but here, the bezel is integrated. It doesn't separate at all. It is part of the K-shape, really. Um, so it is a very interesting, uh, very different type of cushion that Farrah went for. And I do commend them on being different. So pros and cons of the watch, and one of the first big pros for me is just the size and I guess the general K-shape as well. It's very unique just to see a cushion slash square-ish type case shape in the watch industry, especially for more affordable price points. It's a case shape I've always been interested in because I just like how it looks visually. I like the way it wears. Uh, but again, not a lot of companies do it. You kind of have like Panerai, Fears, not much else out there. So it's nice to see a brand like Ferrer or brands like Ducksworth uh, starting to do more of these uh, cushion style cases. And this one wears pretty well. I'm glad they didn't oversize the watch. It is easy with a square watch to kind of have it look too big because you do have more surface area on the watch. Uh, so at 39, it is well sized. It's not too small, it's not too big. It's a sweet spot, I think, for many people. Another big pro for the watch, and I think what also surprised me most in person, is that the dial quality is really good. You do have the brushing, you have the blue numerals that really pop out nicely against that silver monotone brushing. And the overall, kind of the way the dial comes together just feels very premium. It doesn't feel like corners were cut uh, and it does just feel like a very high quality watch. Would it have been nice to see 
heat blued instead of just kind of whatever chemical or uh, treatment they ended up using to blue the numerals in the hands. Yes, but at the end of the day, for the price point, I think it's acceptable. And it also just isn't badly executed. And lastly, I just think the pricing is fair. If we're just under $1,000, you're getting a pretty interesting uh, case shape that probably wasn't cheap to manufacture. You are getting a pretty good quality dial and a decent movement that usually is kind of at this price point, if not a little bit more uh, above this price point. So you are getting a lot of value packed in here for, I think, a decent price. Moving on to cons, I think one of the bigger cons for me and something I battled throughout the wearing experience of this watch is the fact that the K-shape can feel weird at times. I do like the shape, I do like the size, I do like how it fits, but at times it can feel a little bit bulbous. It would have been nice to see it a little bit thinner. Uh, outside of that, at certain angles, the K-shape just can look a little awkward, a little bit weird because it's not a very traditional square. It's a little bit more rounded. Uh, it has more traditional integrated lugs rather than a more wire style or welded type lug look. So it is just a very much non-traditional way of doing a cushion shape that feels interesting on wrists. It, it's something you either will love or hate or be mixed about like I am. The main thing to look out for is just don't use 20 to 16 millimeter straps because the taper makes it feel a little bit too top heavy. And outside of that, if they could thin down the watch just a little bit, it has a manual wind movement in it. And I know you kind of went with a lot of complication with the curves and the edges and I guess the ergonomics of the watch. But if you can shrink down the watch proportion a little bit, I think it would benefit it a lot. My last tiny nitpick is really that I just wish the watch did feature heat blued numerals or heat blued hands or only hands and then steel numerals, whatever worked out best for them. I know with heat blueing, it can be harder to match the different tones of blue on the dial between like the hands, the indices, and the kind of logo that they're using at 12 o'clock. The, the blue might vary a little bit. And you know, if that was a problem in terms of manufacturing costs and all this stuff, Again, just blew the hands maybe. It would have been a really nice touch. I think it would have made it feel a little bit more premium. And I wouldn't have mind spending maybe an extra one, two, even $300 because the design is good enough to where that extra step up would have just been uh, kind of a home run for the design. Final thoughts on this watch and I really enjoyed it. It was one of those watches where I got in person that I liked online, but I loved a lot more in person. It's something that you wear it and as you have it kind of moving around, sometimes the bluish of the numerals and hands don't catch the light. It looks very uh, dark and matte, and other times they really pop out with a lot of color and a lot of life. And it just is a very nice, interesting look about the watch. It has a lot of dynamic nature to it. The brushing really pops out and just feels very nicely done. And the overall just proportions, the way the case wears, the fact that it is an untraditional wearing watch in its shape, all makes it feel like a very good interesting watch. And thankfully, I don't think there's much out there that really directly compete with this watch either. Uh, sure, you have like offerings from Nomos, let's say, but uh, you don't have it really in this case style, case shape, and there isn't anything that really goes straight head to head with it. So I think because of that, uh, it really just stands in kind of a league of its own. And if you like the design, you're getting a decent amount for what you pay. At the end of the day, my biggest reservation for this new uh, cushion case series for Ferrer was that they departed from the more traditional square-ish case and uh, very standard lug form. And they've gone to this more curved case shape that's more integrated and more unique to Ferrer, I would say, but also something that when you don't see it in person, it's kind of hard to gauge whether or not it will look good and just make sense in person. From a lot of photos and even some videos online, to me, it almost does look too bulbous. It looks a little bit weird, but when I had it on the wrist, it made sense. It wore nicely. It was very compact. And uh, I do think they can make it a little bit thinner, but as it stands, it still is a wonderful design that I think if they iterate on, it can be a home run design for Fair. And something I particularly love about this model uh, by itself is that Fair went very, very minimal, very reserved on the colorway. They didn't add uh, random shades of like green or orange or something just because they decide to be kooky and different. Uh, they just kept it very traditional, very simple, very clean. And uh, it's not something fair is necessarily known for half the time. It's not, they usually don't show restraint with color and that's okay. Sometimes it looks really good, but sometimes I don't want to have that kooky, weird, uh, out there watch. I just want something simple and classic. And fair definitely hits the nail on the head with this watch. If you're considering it, I would say definitely go for it. There's really not much to be disappointed by. And if none of my cons really bother you, you'll probably love the watch. Anyway, those are just my thoughts. Thank you as always for watching the video. Hope you got something out of it and I'll see you in another one.